Good gentleman from District 29. Mr. Speaker, to debate against the bill. You have the floor. Mr. Speaker uh, and ladies and gentlemen of the House, for those of you who don't know me, I was born and raised in Pocatello. In 1987, I couldn't wait to get out of there. Uh, probably no different than a lot of you in your hometowns. I joined the Army. I went off to West Point. I spent the next 14 years doing other things. But time has a way of changing a person's mind. And as my wife and I decided where we wanted to raise our kids, we took another look at Pocatello. And it was a much different place. We had grown, it had changed, and it worked for us. And we were happy to return and raise our kids there. When you come into the city of Pocatello from Idaho Falls, heading down to Salt Lake on I-15, you enter a beautiful valley with mountains on both sides. On the east side of Pocatello is a peak called Chinese Peak. Up until 2001, Chinese Peak was called Chink's Peak, an offensive term that had labeled that mountain as long as I could remember in many years before. A reminder to our community of the difficult relationship we had with Chinese Americans who had come to Pocatello to help build the community through the railroad. A reminder to our community of the difficult relationship that this state had with Chinese Americans as they came to the state to mine. In 1887, 31 Chinese miners were shot and or mutilated as they worked mining claims that no white miners were willing to mine because of the work that it took. And that's just one of many examples of the difficulties this state had with Chinese Americans. In fact, in Article 6 of our Constitution, we don't allow them to vote. We don't allow Mormons to vote. We don't allow many Native Americans to vote in the original Constitution. Chink's Peak was a reminder to our community of that relationship and that history. It was named after a gentleman who, a Chinese American who had died at the uh, top of the mountain. And in my opinion, under this legislation, uh, something similar, a similarly named school would not be allowed to change its name by the community, would have to come to this body to get the permission to do so. Its continued use embarrassed our community because it told anybody who knew of the mountain, knew of the name, that we had not made progress, that we still embrace that history even though we did not. I can still remember standing next to my sister-in-law who was of Chinese descent uh, and she was asking about the different geographic features and of course that one came up and I had to explain that to her. It was embarrassing. It's a community decision to change these names. It's the community that wrestles with these concepts, with these ideas. It's the community that has these discussions. Even though we're all Idahoans, we all know that about our communities. These are things we need to decide. This is what local control is all about. This is why that concept is a truism. It's not just something that we throw around during campaigns. Local control is important to our communities. The changing of that name was an important decision for our community. And if in your community you have something that brings that sort of embarrassment that is awkward for your community, you should demand the right to change it. And you should not expect to have to come to this body 
to try to convince 105 people or half plus one of 105 people and the governor that that's the right decision for your community. Thank you.